Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning. I'm all cleaned up, showered up, ready to go to my 50 and over class at Open Door. Brother Pat goes to that class. I've been attending it over a year. And Brother Pat was asked to lead a men's fellowship on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. in the morning before a lot of the men go to work. And Brother Pat invited me to attend. And I showed up late, so everybody was there, and I come walking in late. And uh, didn't mean to be late, but it just happened that way. So... This is my timer, which is running. But you can make it do other things like, a, remember the hourglass, one minute or three minute egg timers that had either sand or white salt or something in it. You just turned it upside down. And when it ran out, that was three minutes or two minutes or one minute. You can do that in the modern age here. This has about, I would say, six, six or more different functions. And I can punch in one minute, and then it starts beeping, or two minutes. Point being, I can go to anybody's church, anybody's class. I'm looking for the anointed teacher who's preaching and teaching in the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I can sit there and say, amen, that's right, good teaching. But what I don't want is your personal theological opinion, which really counts for nothing, I want to hear you speak and teach the Word of God and truth in the Word of God. That means two verses of Scripture saying the same thing or more. Two, three, four, or more. I wrote, I wrote a country song. I'm looking for doors and fours. The Word's the starting place. I'm looking for doors and fours, the words, the truth forever. <laughs> I wrote this simple little country to beat country song. And uh, anyway, here's a book. And it's hard to see what it says right there. Maybe you can see it. Oh, man, it's shiny. Who's who in the Bible? And I'm not interested in the who's who. It's every name that's in the Old Testament, New Testament, and a short paragraph on who they were. In the Bible is what I'm interested in. So when I come to your class, you're teaching. Are you teaching out of this book? Even if it's just the New Testament and Psalms. Are you teaching out of the, the Bible? The 66 books that the Holy Spirit inspired man to write. The Holy Spirit's writings through man. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear the spiritual principles written in the Bible. The book of life. God's Bible. God's promises. God's spiritual principles. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to. I don't care if you wrote a book or a commentary. Uh, I'm really interested, do you have power? Are you, are you born of the Holy Spirit? Do you teach with anointing? Because I know, because my Holy Spirit will witness to the one and same Holy Spirit that you have when I run into an anointed teacher who has the Holy Spirit, who's born of the Spirit. A lot of preachers out there have never been called to the pulpit. They're operating in their illumination of man's IQ and intellect, training in Bible college in psychology and how to speak and move people and send money to the mother church. <laughs> I'm from the father church that began in Jerusalem. I exalt the father, even though Jerusalem may be the mother of us all. I worship God who created Jerusalem, the mother of us all. <laughs> I'm I'm doing a play on words here. What's important, and I want to take you to now after four minutes of yakking, in the Bible, who's who in the Bible? I recommend that you own one of these books. I've been in the Word 44 years. 
And believe me, I will raise my hand and tell you, I've never found that in the Bible. I believe that's non-scripture. Zero, zip. That word the Holy Spirit didn't put in his Bible, like rapture or trinity. Zero, zip. So don't make a major doctrine out of it to me. All right? And I would rather hear you teach out of the Bible instead of your book that you've just written on uh, on depression. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm telling you, church, the Christian church today is messed up. Anyway, here's a point I want to make at 1 Corinthians. Beginning at the 10th verse, I'm going to read four verses, and I recommend that you read 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, all the way through to the end. I think it's 30 verses. Plus or minus a couple. It's just a guess. The heading in this super giant print, I don't know if you can see it right there in really dark letters. It says, Division in the Church. Now let me read. I'm reading 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I be, and I'm reading King James 16.11. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name or the authority, A over A, of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. The same, the unity, the one that's in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And that there be no division among you. What is the division? I'll tell you in advance before I get to it. They're following teachers. Now this teaching, I have named the big four of Corinth. The big four of Corinth, all right? Obviously, number one is the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, number one prophet, number one teacher. The Holy Spirit in the one flesh person, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I said a lot right there. Speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined, completely fullness mature. Fully, fullness, completely joined, not perfect. Completely joined together in the same mind heart. Heart, mind, mind, heart. Your heart is in your head. This pump in your chest over here cannot think a reason. It's on its own fuse breaker, and you can be dead in your mind, and your heart still be pumping and circulating bread, uh, blood. You can be laying in the hospital, a vegetable, dead, and your heart's still going. The heart is a muscle, a pump that moves blood, cannot think or reason, does not have emotion. The spiritual heart in your head is not 12 inches away from your mind. It's connected to your mind. It's not from here to here. It's all up here. <laughs> That's a man-centered church teaching that the mind and the heart are 12 inches apart. That's man-centered. What, what chapter and verse do you have for the 12 inches apart? There is none. I'm not afraid to tell you that's non-scripture. Okay? Back to verse 11. Uh, oh, of the same mind or the same mind heart in the same judgment. Good accurately handling, rightly dividing, accurately handling, good judgment of scripture. Verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me, Paul, of you, of you, many brethren, by them which are of the household of Cleo, not, not Chilo. It's C-H, but the C-H is pronounced K, Cleo. That there are contentions multiple among you. Divisions and contentions. Over what? The next verse the big four of Corinth, and here they come. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, Paul's number two. I am of Apollos, Apollos is number four, and I'll tell you why. And I am Cephas, Cephas is Peter, Peter is number three. And I am of Christ, or I of Christ, the Lord Christ Jesus, Christ anointed Messiah. I am of the Messiah Christ anointing, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Number one, son of man, son of God, number one prophet, number one teacher, and our Savior raised from the dead. 
number one, Christ. Paul is number two because he's to us, the Gentile Greeks. Apollos is number four because he ends up head bishop of Corinth. So Paul includes him. He's the most eloquent number one teacher, head elder and bishop of Corinth. Peter is sent to the Jews. In 1 Peter, you find all the providences that he went to and Cappadocia, the Euphrates River on the east coast of Cappadocia, he and his wife sailed down the Euphrates River to Babylon, preaching Messiah Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, to all Jews that stayed on the Euphrates River and did not return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. So put Peter has a whole ministry out there, north and east to Babylon and back to Jerusalem. Those are his providences to minister to Israelite Jews, to bring them to Christ and Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the new sect called the Way. All right, but we're going west here to Corinth. This is Paul's district, all right, and Apollos' district, and the Holy Spirit's district. The Holy Spirit is the sender of Barnabas and Paul from the second headquarters, Antioch of Poseidon in 40 A.D., then there's the third headquarters from the Father Church in Jerusalem, one, to Antioch in Assyria, two, to Ephesus of Turkey, three, which is west of Antioch of Poseidon, which is on the southwest tip of Galatea, and Galatia in Asia falls away from Paul's teachings. They go to another Christ, another gospel. They are bewitched by a Gnostic teaching mixture. That is my point. Verse 13, I got to end at 12 minutes here. Uh, is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? No. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. <laughs> Three no's there, major doctrine and no's. Okay, so that's my point. That's the big four teachers that groups were contentious and dividing themselves into following teachers. Do not follow teachers. Follow the Holy Spirit word of truth. The Lord Jesus Christ ascended and seated head of his church, his body, the groom spirit body. The Christian church can believe she's the bride if she wants to. I preach the Christ anointed church of which the Lord is the head of his spirit body and it's a groom body. And there are sun saints, saint sons, elder women in the Christ anointed church. Women, females can be saint sons or sun saints in a stewardship calling described as sun saints. Did you get that one? Women are sun saints in a stewardship calling called sun saints, Christ anointed believers, beloved, for there's neither male nor female, but we're all equal in the spirit, not in the natural, not in the natural human husband and wife and children and family. That's a different teaching. In the spirit, we're equal, whether married or single. But if you marry, you give your husband his headship and his lordship, ladies, and you push his green buttons and you service him and you edify him and you build him up. It's not about you. You're the helper. You're the helpmate to build up your husband. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in on this one. 1420, gotta go. Eugene Bear teaching you about the big four of Corinth. Please read the first chapter of Corinth all the way through. Love you. Bye.